Adobe Camera Raw 7.0 is the new and highly improved version of Adobe Camera Raw that is shipping with Photoshop CS6. Now, the Camera Raw editor is included with Photoshop and essentially it's gonna allow you to edit images outside of Photoshop and in a different sort of way, maybe a more refined way. If you've purchased Photoshop or in other ways acquired Photoshop, you're going to have Camera Raw. It's included with Photoshop. Now, I'm looking at it here in the bridge, and there are a couple things that I want to talk about as far as Camera Raw is concerned. If you've never even looked into Camera Raw before, and then a couple little tips before we jump into the Camera Raw editor. So, number one, you're going to want to look into your camera's manual to see if your camera even shoots in the Camera Raw format if you've never photographed anything in the Raw format before. There's a huge advantage to shooting Raw, and here's in a nutshell what the advantage is there's much more image in a camera raw image. A JPEG image consists of 256 levels of color and tone. It's an 8-bit image. Camera raw is a little bit bigger. It consists of about 4,096 levels of color and tone. So when you talk in, in Photoshop language about being able to push and pull pixels, there's a lot more pixels to be pushed and pulled in a camera raw image as opposed to just a standard straight up JPEG image. So that's number one. Um, number two, you can see that these are .cr2 files. That's the Canon camera raw image. Nikon also has camera raw and it's a .nef file format. And there's others, all depending on the cameras. Uh, manufacturer, Olympus, you know, blah, 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 all the different cameras. They all have different uh, file extensions. So just look in your manual and see if your camera shoots raw. And if so, you're probably golden. So a couple little tips before we jump into really looking at the editor. Number one, you can use the camera raw editor outside of Photoshop. You don't even need to open Photoshop to use the camera raw editor. You can open up the bridge, which loads a little bit faster, or maybe you just have Photoshop batch processing things. But you want to go and start checking out images or tweaking contrast and tone and things like that in the bridge. Well, you can just select an image and right click and choose Opening Camera Raw, or the hotkey is just Command or Control R. And that's going to pop up the Camera Raw Editor. Give it a second here. It's going to load it up. And you can work on these images right here. You can see Photoshop didn't even open and we can work on them right here in the bridge. That's great. Now, the other cool tip before we jump into Photoshop is that you can not only work on raw files, .cr2 or .dng or .nef or whatever you're working with, but you can also open up JPEG and TIFF files. And again, it's the same thing. You would just select the file in the bridge, right click, open in camera raw, or that same command or control R hotkey. And you can edit JPEG and TIFF images in the camera raw editor as well which is just a different way to work with images. So it's kind of cool. So let's pop over to Photoshop here and we're going to open up an image in Camera Raw. And I'm gonna do that by just dragging an image from the bridge into Photoshop. So I'm gonna grab this guy ACR7.CR2, which has actually been edited um, or tweaked in an older version of Adobe Camera Raw. So I'm gonna drag it over into Photoshop and you're going to see it's going to pop up the Adobe Camera Raw dialog box. Now, there are a couple things here that we want to look at. The number one thing is that we're actually not even working in Adobe Camera Raw 7, truly speaking, right now. I mean, we are. You can see up here it says Camera Raw 7, but these are all of the controls from Camera Raw 6 or whatever version I was using when I uh, messed around with this image. So, here's what we want to do first and foremost. You can see there's a little exclamation point. Essentially, that's just going to say, hey, would you like to update there? There's a little tooltip update to current process. We can do that also in the camera calibration tab here, process 2010, let's go to 2012. And what's going to happen is Adobe Camera Raw is basically going to say, all right, I'm going to try to mimic the settings in or that you had set on the older version of Camera Raw here, but instead I'm going to use all the settings for Adobe Camera Raw 7. You can see all of our sliders have changed. All right, but that's not that's not doing me any good. So um, we, we're definitely going to remain here working in Adobe Camera Raw 7, but we're just kind of going to zero off all of these sliders by just double clicking each slider, just like that. We're just going to set them all to zero and go back to kind of how this image looked coming out of camera. And I think there might have been a little uh, saturation. Okay, no no color editing or anything like that. So here's what we had. This is right out of camera. You can see there's a lot to be done to this image. It really needs some serious work. So we're going to start by taking a look at the sliders. We're going to start with exposure. Exposure is going to control the mid-tones of your image, sort of this whole middle area of your histogram. Let's boost this guy up to about 1.8. Eight. Let's see what that does. That looks pretty good. Now notice we're really blowing out. We're really doing a bad job there, right over the crest of this sand dune, blowing out the sky. The sun is just exploding in our face. Don't worry about that. We're going to play around with that in a moment. 
Contrast is usually something I play with at the end, so we'll come back to that later. Now, here's where things get interesting. We're gonna take our highlights, which is basically obviously gonna focus on the highlights or the, the brighter part of the image. Don't think of it so much as just strictly the highlights, but rather think of it as the brighter portions of your image. We're gonna drag that all the way back to negative 100. You can see that's just gonna bring that sky right back, doing a much nicer job even than the recovery slider would have in Adobe Camera Raw 6. And look at this, we still have this extra white slider that we could pull it back even more using. We'll get to that in a second though. So you see that the highlight slider is gonna control the brighter portion of your image. You can brighten it, which we obviously don't wanna do. Well, maybe you would or something, but we don't in this case. We're gonna reduce the highlights to negative 100 as far back as it's gonna allow us to pull them. Then what we can do with the shadows is we can either darken the shadows, which we probably don't want to do. Maybe we do, that's kind of cool. But I think I'm going to brighten them a little bit here. So I'm going to boost them up to maybe 50, 55. Let's go with 55, that looks kind of cool. Now we're going to come back here to whites. And again, the sky is not quite as dark as I want it. So I'm going to drag back on whites. And I'm just going to pull all the way back to negative 100, just like that. And we're killing off a lot of the contrast. Don't worry about that yet. We're going to adjust the contrast in a moment. But the whites, the difference between whites and highlights is the whites really focuses over here on the highlights portion of the histogram. So if you think of it as, as just the extreme highlights, that's what whites is going to target, whereas highlights is more like just the lighter areas of the image. Now blacks as well, same principle as whites, where it's just the very dark blacks of the image. If I want to darken up some of these darker areas in the sand down here, that would allow me to do that. I actually want to open some of them up, so I'm just going to boost this to something like plus 50. Now, honestly, at this point, I would probably take it into Photoshop and do all of my contrast adjustments in there where I could use adjustment layers and masking and everything like that. But because this is a tutorial on Adobe Camera Raw 7, we're gonna remain in Camera Raw. So let's boost our contrast here to something like 55. All right, so that's gonna give us a little bit of interest there. That's uh, kind of cool looking. Um, we can also come down here and let's just throw some clarity in here, give it a little bit of a mid-tone punch, really sort of define some of these wind-whipped little channels and grooves in the surface of the sand. So let's boost clarity to about 30. We don't want to go too high. Um, one of the great things about Adobe Camera Raw 7 is the haloing that used to be such a prevalent problem with the clarity has really been dealt with. It's really been addressed quite nicely and we don't have to worry about that quite as much, but still, you don't want to go overboard because you start to get that sort of HDR puke look. That's really bad. In addition to the whole clarity slider issue being fixed with the haloing, Adobe Camera Raw is also now much better at preventing noise. It, it is amazing, and it also has been retooled and, and upgraded to help prevent artifacting and chromatic aberrations as well. But mainly, I'm focused on the noise because that was always a big issue when you go and you try to brighten very dark images or just very dark portions of, of an image maybe that otherwise looks great. So the noise reduction and keeping that under wraps is really, really a massively upgraded aspect of Adobe Camera Raw 7. So let's take a look here at the graduated filter tool. We're going to take a look at the adjustment brush in just a second, but let's bring this up. And you can see that in addition to having the sliders that the rest of Camera Raw has, we also have temperature and tint sliders now. See, in previous versions of Adobe Camera Raw, we had this option to add a tint, but it was sort of based on the color, and it just added this very film-looking artificial color, sort of that overlaid everything, and you had to play with the saturation to get it to all blend in correctly. And it was just, it was weird, it was, it was funky. So let's here play with the temperature. I'm gonna set all of these guys, all these sliders to their normal zero, by just by double-clicking them, like so. And I'm gonna boost the temperature up maybe plus 50, and I'm gonna boost the tint by maybe plus 100, just introduce a lot of purple and orange. And we're gonna drag a graduated filter straight down out of the sky, like so. And that's maybe a little bit too much orange, so let's reduce that to about 20, somewhere between 15 and 20. That looks cool. And I'm going to reduce the exposure just a little bit to darken it up, and maybe even reduce the saturation just a touch. So something like that looks kind of cool. And maybe reduce the highlights a little bit more too, just to darken up the brighter portions of the sky. That looks cool. So now let's go over and grab the adjustments brush. Now the adjustment brush is where the noise reduction feature come becomes a huge factor in Adobe Camera Raw 7. And the reason is if you take this adjustment brush and you just want to brighten up a dark doorway or a dark hallway or alleyway or something, and really the rest of the image is totally unaffected or completely just the way you had it, Part of the problem with that was when you would take a very dark portion of the image and brighten it up, you would get a lot of artifacting, a lot of noise. And now you can just reduce that noise right there selectively in the area you're painting over with noise reduction. Now, in this image, I don't really need noise reduction, but just know that it's a very, very cool feature. So I'm gonna neutralize my temperature and tint like so. And I'm gonna set my exposure to 
plus uh, 0.15. I'm going to set the contrast to 100, just boost it way up. I'm going to set the highlights to 0. I'm going to set my shadows to plus 40, so we're going to brighten up the shadows just a touch. I'm going to set my clarity. I'm going to bring it up here to around 60 or 70, something like that. And then I'm going to reduce saturation to negative 40. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint along uh, all of the sand here and just cover the sand with this brush. So I'm going to paint in here, and you can see I'm just going to fill all of this in, really reducing the saturation of the sand and sort of very, very highly boosting the contrast. We're just jacking the contrast way up here in our sand, and that looks great. We could go along the horizon line and really make sure it's cut in nicely. We're not really going to take the time to do that in this case because I don't want to bore you more than I already have. And what we're going to do at this point is we can go and just correct the vignette. I like this. And you could play with your settings here on the adjustment brush. But let's go ahead and correct the vignette. We're going to choose the hand tool just to get us out of the adjustment brush. And we're going to pop over here to lens correction, the lens correction button. And you may be seeing profile. We're going to go to manual here. And we're just going to boost the lens vignetting, maybe plus 30, or just until we see the sides neutralize a little bit. We want to be careful that we don't introduce sort of a, a bright halo effect at the edges of our frames. I would rather there be a little bit of vignetting than a little bit of a white vignette, because that just can look very bad and kind of cheap and junky. So that's that. And the last thing we'll look at is just the workflow options down here at the bottom of the Camera Raw dialog box. These haven't really changed, but I just want to bring this up because if you've never used Camera Raw before, this is sort of the next step leading into opening this image in Photoshop. You would choose your color space, which pretty much anything is good. Um, I typically stick with Adobe RGB. Lightroom is, has a broad enough color gamma to, to see all the colors in Pro Photo. sRGB, you probably want to stay away from that. So usually Adobe RGB 1998 is a good one to stick with. That's what I've got my camera set to shoot to right now. Bit depth, 8 bits for 16. If your, kick, if your computer excuse me, can handle 16 bits, go ahead and you want to edit in 16 bits. Again, you just preserve a lot more of those levels of color and tone. Um, and then the size, you can either upsample or downsample the image. This is just native 21 megapixels coming out of the camera. And then your resolution, you can set the sharpen it and all that kind of stuff. And you can even open it as a smart object. So hit OK. And then at this point, all that's left to do, you can actually save a JPEG right out of Adobe Camera Raw, or there are a few other file formats you can save out as well. Or you can go ahead and open the image in Photoshop, or just hitting Done is going to save all these changes and just close the Camera Raw dialog box. Now, a little hot key here. If you hold down the Shift key, you can see that Open Image turns to Open Object. And all that's doing is it's going to open this image as a smart object in Photoshop. And that smart object, when you double click to edit the smart object, is going to pop up the Adobe Camera Raw dialog box again. So that's just something to think about. So we're going to go ahead and hit Done. Now, before I let you go, we're going to take a look at a kind of a cool little uh, tip. Now, here's the Camera Raw image that we just edited. Here's sort of one that I pre-ran, so a little smoother maybe when I took a little bit more time to, to do it. Um, but one of the cool things here, I'm going to bring up this other bridge window that I have open, is let's take a look at this DNG file here. Now, DNG is just Adobe's digital negative. It's another form of, of Camera Raw. We're going to right click on it and hit Open in Camera Raw. And give it a second, it's going to open up. And you can see here that I have, I've not even touched this image. Now, I had this image in Bridge when uh, Bridge had Adobe Camera Raw 6 or whatever the version before 7 would have been, probably 6, right? And you can see that because I never even edited this image in Camera Raw, it's automatically here in Bridge CS6 opening up and saying, hey, we're just going to start you off right out of the gate with Adobe Camera Raw 7. However, check this out. This image, which is very poorly shot and poorly lit and just a million other things, dreadful. We're going to right click and choose Open in Camera Raw. And this image was previously edited in Adobe Camera Raw 6. Now, remember we had talked about way back at the beginning of this tutorial that you can go ahead and just hit the exclamation point, boom, and it's going to update to a new uh, or to the new Adobe Camera Raw 7 editor. Now, what if you've edited a whole bunch of images and you don't want to be bothered by opening each one individually in Camera Raw? Well, number one, you can shift click and open a bunch of images in camera raw at one time but there's even a faster way check this out we're going to open this guy up so i'm going to hit commander control r to just pop him up in camera raw and we're going to create a preset now i actually think i've created the preset already this acr preset so i'm going to delete that preset we're going to create a new one so what i'm going to do is you're here in your basic tab we're going to go over to the presets tab and we're just going to hit the new preset button now when that happens you get the new preset dialog box give it a name and i'm going to name it ACR7, just Adobe Camera Raw 7, and the subset is going to be process version. That's all we want to copy here, process version. 
hit OK. Now the process version, again, just for a little bit of review, underneath camera calibration, right here, process. The process version for Adobe Camera Raw 6 is this 2010. However, the current is 2012. So we want the current version. So as soon as we've created that uh, preset, we can just go ahead and hit done here. And again, when Camera Raw goes from Camera Raw 6 to Camera Raw 7 with all the new settings, it's going to do its best to sort of bring everything up to speed, but it doesn't always do that great a job. Um, so we're going to right click here and check this out. We can just, uh, let me drag this up near the top of my screen. Right click and then we go develop settings and it's still off screen, it's way off screen. Um, well, what we've got is down here, this is a list of all the presets and I've got some that are converting right to sort of the way my camera sees different things in camera and down on the list off screen is one called ACR7 that we just created. I'm going to hit that and you're going to see it's going to convert that image. Now it looks awful, but at this point we could go in and if I double click on this, it's going to bring it up in the Camera Raw editor and we can see that it is Adobe Camera Raw 7 that we're now working with. So that's great. And that's it. So that's the new features, or at least the new features that I'm going to be using in Adobe Camera Raw 7. And it's the bulk of the features and the upgrades and all the great things that Adobe's done with Camera Raw 7. So I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you've learned a thing or two. Now go out there and shoot Camera Raw, bring those images in and have a blast with them in Camera Raw before you bring them into Photoshop and make them even more amazing. So that's it for this one. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you go check out the site. That's www.tutvid.com for more great free video tutorials. Thanks for watching.